it was four years ago, almost to the day, that I became a mama. Our daughter, Anna Grace, came into the world on May 5th, and two years later, we have our son, Zachary, who turns two on June 9th. On occasion, I feel like super mom, but most days I feel fragile, exhausted, and clinging to my Bible and doing as much art as I can squeeze in a day. Hello, my name is Lauren Elizabeth with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I welcome you to my first ever sketchbook tour. And this is devoted to you mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. I hope this can encourage you to find all those tiny little cracks in your day to release and express any of the toxic stress or negative thoughts that prevent you from being the best mama that only you can be. And if singing it out or molding it out with clay or drawing it out like I'll be today helps you to do that, do it more, do it often so that you can love harder. So I'll also be showing you some of my most recent artwork and my newest sketchbook. And if you wait to the very end, I have a Mother's Day giveaway that you don't want to miss, as well as a big announcement. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so I used a 7x10 heavyweight mixed media master's touch sketchbook. This is wire bound. You'll see my most favorite mediums are micron pens, Prismacolor pencils, Copic markers, acrylic paint, and my Arteza acrylic paint markers. Now I'm gonna call this my 365 days of color sketchbook because I literally started it days after I started that challenge. And this isn't actually the first page. I'll show the very first page that I pulled out and used as prints at the very end. So can you guess what letter this is? And how many different animals do you see? It's the letter B and there's 10 different species here. There's little ladybugs in the lower left corner of that llama's foot. Now this was my first idea for a four part ocean animal commission that I did. I didn't end up using this design I went with this one instead, then I made a shark, a seahorse, and then a betta fish. The client gave me a lot of freedom and I just had a blast. I have a video linked down below if you want to see the vlog for that. For this I used my graphite pencil, Copic markers, and Prismacolors. Now I will often very roughly sketch out, draw out, test out colors for my masterclass tutorials. That's what I did for this one. This is Copic markers and acrylic paint markers. Students voted on a Brazilian porcupine, which turned into this. My honest inspiration behind this was the movie Encanto that I watched with my kids. Changed my life. Best movie ever. Now I really do try when the children are well to get them outside every single day. I try to get them to stop and listen to the birds, to the wind, I have them touch the flowers, I have them smell the flowers to truly cherish and savor the wonderful things outside. And there's just so much on our nature walks to enjoy. And that carries into my sketchbook like these clovers that led to a St. Patrick's Day theme for this longhorn goat illustration. So this is the first butterfly of many to come in this sketchbook tour. I don't just love butterflies for just the wonderful colors and designs. It's actually because ever since my daughter was little, I noticed that butterflies seem to always find her, follow her, lay on her. I mean, I'm not making this up. Even times she'd be by the window and we'd see like three butterflies peek in, almost as if they're trying to get in to find Anna Grace. She's this butterfly magnet, so that's why I call my Anna Grace my butterfly. So we see lots of ducks around us because we live by Crystal Lake. If you're wondering, most times I don't get to really bring my sketchbook with me because I'm trying to prevent my little ones from falling in the water or getting hurt or getting lost. I mean, they're just so fast and so little. But this one is entirely color pencil and graphite pencil. 
So my next one is a real fun doodle, just with Micron pens and my graphite pencil. Started a little bit to color that whale, but didn't finish. If you look closely at the chameleon, I don't know what the technique is called, but you just draw in a way that you don't lift up your pen. And I did that for the body, but then I drew in the little spines on the back. And then squeezed in a tiny little boho fawn in the upper left-hand corner. Now the next drawing is definitely not my favorite. I had a whole spectacular idea in my head to make these beautiful birds. It turned into just another wacky design that I covered with Copic markers. Actually, this was entirely Copic markers. Definitely something fun to just play with. Didn't turn into a painting though. So I love animal illustrations. I would not consider myself an illustrator. I would say I'm more of a painter, but I sometimes try to create my own little cat bird illustrations, and this was just a few of them. A children's book would be so much fun to create one day. Definitely not an undertaking I can take on now, but in the future, I would love to get involved in that. Now, have you seen these beautiful paintings where the butterflies are lined up vertically in a row of two or three or more? Oh my goodness, I love the ones I've seen on Etsy and I tried to create my own here. Now I pulled this page out of the sketchbook and then when I painted it with acrylics, let it dry, I glued it back to its own page. I just love how the colors turned out. That's actually a monarch butterfly followed by two moths. And you will actually see that center moth again in a painting coming at the end of the sketchbook tour. So have you ever tried to design your own insect? These are all beetles that I made up. However, I did take from a bunch of different reference photos, different features, antennas, body shapes, and made my own little cool designs. And you realize as you're doing this, how creative our creator is. Just insects alone on this earth are so imaginative. Now here's one I love. It just started out as an Australian shepherd drawing, turned into a boho doggy drawing. Then I added a butterfly and then a hummingbird and I love it. I really do like this one. The hummingbird's not my favorite. I don't really like the drawing, but most of it I do really like. So by now you probably caught on to my favorite things. There's cats, butterflies, dogs, and birds. Lots of those in the sketchbook. Now on occasion, my kids are relaxed and are contained in a certain park or area that we're hiking so that I feel comfortable enough to sit down and draw. And that's what happened with this cat. Another go at a cat illustration with a few more to follow after that. I pulled these from memory, squeezed in a little rat at the top, eyeing up a strawberry. Did you know that rats have incredible memories? They're excellent climbers, swimmers, even jumpers. I think rats are so amazing. Now of the domesticated cats, I'm fascinated by Maine Coon cats. Don't their faces look so strong and just basically like a mini lion? I used entirely Prisma color pencils. A really helpful lesson actually for painting fur was this drawing of a Maine Coon. My husband calls these man coons because they look very masculine and I sometimes catch myself saying the same thing. And speaking of which, my husband's favorite, favorite animal is a hawk. Now here's another time where I was testing out colors and designs to see if I wanted to make it into a painting. Now my technique for these Copic markers and color pencils First, I, after the drawing, I color the entire thing with my Copic markers. And these are the colors that I plan to use with the pencils, but when I add the pencils, I try to brighten them up, so I'll use brighter colors that are similar. I'll add lots and lots of layers to make them more bold. The Prisma colors are very waxy, so I can add more designs over top these feathers than I could with the Copic markers. So that's also what I can do with all those layers of pencils over top. I use that same exact technique, same medium for this second hawk. So now that you've seen these two hawk designs, which one would you like me to turn into a painting? Comment down below which one you prefer, hawk number one or hawk number two. 
Have you ever seen a turquoise penguin ready to have some tea? Well, this goofy drawing led to this masterclass tutorial. Lots of fun painting it. So here's me really fooling around and not trying to perfect my drawings here. I just decided to be goofy in my sketchbook. We have Flamingo, we have Lady Hum, we have a Quacker, we have Kinger Fisher, and we have Puffy in the lower left hand corner. I'm drawn to birds for many reasons. One, the coloring. Two, the different feather designs. I just find that fun to draw and paint. And then three, they always have such unique different beaks. Here's another one that I was working on a vulture, turned into more of a color testing. And that led to me redoing this painting that was sitting in my art room for quite a while. I just upped the colors and I added more violets, more pinks, more sky blues to this one. It's in my shop called Renewed Strength. It's a 24 by 36 inch painting, quite large. So I did a commission not too long ago with this exact turtle. When I painted it, I had so much fun that I wanted to recreate it again using my Copic markers and colored pencils. I discovered that with this technique, I have to be a lot more careful creating the designs on the turtle shell and I can really fix that more easily with more layers of paint with my acrylic paint. But if you mess up with those Copic markers in that first layer, it's really hard to touch up with the colored pencils. And this is probably my favorite of the entire sketchbook tour. I love this snail. I felt like this one just came together so easily, so nicely. I was very intimidated by that bulky background, but it worked out. And again, this was with Copics and my color pencils, my sweet little rainbow snail. Love it so much. Now going along with that theme, I decided to then do a rainbow fox, an animal that really intimidates me because of that fur. They have just very unique, long, perfectly straight fur. I find the fur around the chest, the body and the tail needs to be accurate. If you don't have the fur laying in the right direction, it throws the rest of the fur off so much, as well as the length of the other layers. So I've had quite a hard time, but I do love how this fox turned out. In fact, I love it a lot and I plan to make prints of it. So finally, I'll be showing you the two other pieces that I pulled out of this sketchbook. So the first one is the first page, a beagle puppy. You may have seen this quite often. I've had this in another print shop sale that I've done in the past. Absolutely love this one. I'll keep this one around. For this, I use Copic markers, color pencils, and final touches of acrylic paint markers to the eyes, the sunflowers, and the little lights floating. And last but not least is this sweet little frog. So the neighbors that live directly in front of our house have this backyard that's very swampy. It's actually almost a lake at this point and it attracts tons of frogs. So at night when we have the windows open, when it's warm enough, we hear the ribbit, the ribbit, 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 and it's such a beautiful symphony of ribbits. I can't get enough of it, and that's what led to that drawing. So that's the end of this sketchbook. It took me about a year and a half to complete. Next, I'll real quick show you a couple pieces that I've started in my new sketchbook. Now in this sketchbook, I'm currently working on a colorful husky. So I have my layers of Copic markers done. My next step is to apply layer after layer of my Prisma colored pencils. Now my daughter just had her fourth birthday and she requested a rainbow unicorn. So this is the mock-up. I'll be creating the painting soon. All right, guys, I've saved the very best for last. This is my butterfly Siberian tiger painting. This is pulled out from my new sketchbook and taped to a clipboard. Yes, moms, you know how it goes. When you're on a budget, you gotta be resourceful, but it works fabulously. This idea has been sitting in my brain for many months. And one night when I was struggling to sleep, I decided at three o'clock in the morning to just paint it all out. So for those of you that don't know my story, I battled for 10 long years with a pretty serious case of anorexia, bulimia, obsessive exercising, 
I fell into a really scary long-term relationship, one that further hindered my relationship with my family. And a normal day for me was working out three hours a day, counting calories, binging, body checking, so consumed by trying to figure out who I was and feeling so unat rest with my body and my personality up until 2016 when I had surrendered my life to Christ, a point in time when I was so depleted and so beat up, but I haven't looked back since then because my life is truly different. I took on this daily practice of creating art morning and night and listening to sermons, reading scripture and renewing my mind as often as I could. So I've replaced some really toxic, unhealthy habits with a much better one. When I sit down to create art, I kind of feel like I'm opening my mind and heart for God to just download his goodness into me. Like I'm not forcing anything. I'm not trying to control anything. I'm releasing the negative to then be filled with the positive. And that just comes out into my art in the form of cats, dogs, butterflies, reptiles. So I call this butterfly view. And you might have guessed it, but that's the Mother's Day giveaway. One mother who comments down below within the next 24 hours will receive this original print of butterfly view. And that leads to my big announcement. It's so scary to say this, but I will be launching an Etsy shop on August 26th, that's National Dog Day, for my prints. Now, I have been getting lessons from my wonderful sister-in-law teaching me how to use Photoshop so that I can take away the glare, I can up the resolution on these prints. I've also bought a new scanner so it picks up all the texture and detail Finally, I when I'm saying that I've been working for years on this, I really have been working on this for years, just trying to perfect my prints. So a lot of the artwork that you just saw in this sketchbook tour will be in my Etsy shop on August 26th. With the children often getting sick at this age, I'm giving myself plenty of time to get this just right. If you'd like to get more frequent updates on my print shop, than my YouTube channel. I recommend you join my VIP rewards group. This is where you go on my website, you scroll to the very bottom, you'll get an immediate tutorial and a discount for my masterclass and weekly updates from me via email. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Moms, just know how important your work is and how deeply loved you are. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.